Greetings, fluid mechanics enthusiasts. Engineer Leo here. Well, on this video, I like to comment about this guy here who does this video called Equations Stripped in Navy Stokes. Well, you'll see what it's actually about. So, I'm going to comment this video and make some notes about what it's saying, whether it's true or not, about the famous Navy Stokes equations. Welcome to the very first ever episode of Equations Stripped. I'm going to be taking what? Some of the most important, the most famous, the most beautiful mathematical equations, and then I'm going to strip them down layer by layer and explain each part as we go through, so that by the end of each episode, we should fully understand exactly what the equation means and why it's so important. What better place right. to start than with my favorite, like my favorite ever equation? My favorite too. This beauty, the Navier Stokes equation, written here in all its glory. It also happens to be one of the Millennium Prize problems. So these are the seven greatest unsolved mathematical puzzles or mysteries that still existed in the year 2000. And the Clay Institute, along with a group of mathematicians, got together and decided that they would offer a million dollar prize for solving any of these problems. And in the last 17 years, only one's been solved, the Poincaré conjecture. But this one, the Navier Stokes equations, they, they still remain unsolved. We don't fully understand them mathematically. Now, as I said, okay. I'm going to be stripping this equation down layer by layer. So, to begin with, I'm going to tell you what it represents. The Navier Stokes equation models the flow of any fluid that you. Not any fluid. Damn it. I said about on the other video. Navier Stokes, it's only applicable to incompressive and Newtonian fluids. So it's not any fluid. Okay. You can think of so water, air, ice. air at subsonic speeds at a speed of sound, transonic, supersonic, hypersonic speeds vary uh, above the speed of sound, it turns out to be compressive flow. So Navier-Stokes is not ap applicable to compressive flow, only in compressive flow. In compressive flow, you have to, you have variations, strong variations in density and pressure and uh, thus you need an energy equation. Counts as a fluid. It moves slowly, but it still moves. Think about glaciers, for example. Even ketchup, honey. Ketchup also is an incompressive fluid, but a non-Newtonian fluid. So, Navier-Stokes is not applicable. Okay. Mayonnaise, they're all fluids. Mayonnaise is also a non-Newtonian fluid. Most, most food we eat are not Newtonian fluids. Aerodynamics, so Formula One racing cars, for example, they do wind tunnel experiments. So it's a really, really important equation and it just has so many applications. And that's why understanding more about it is just so important because we push forward in all of these areas. <laughs> So now we've stripped back the first layer, let's move on to the second Mass. layer of the equation. That's density! So the Navier-Stokes equation is really just Newton's second law in disguise. And it says that right. force is equal to mass times ah, acceleration. That makes sense. If you have a ball and it's moving... Wait, what, what, what happened to his jacket? He was, he was just wearing his jacket. What? What 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 did it, what happened? An acceleration. The ball has a particular mass, and then it crashed into a wall. The force that that moving ball impacts on that wall is given by just the mass of the ball times its acceleration. For the third what layer, the what the f what the heck what the heck is going on with this guy? Oh, gee. We're going to think about is a little bit more about the individual terms here in the equation. 
So if we start on the, the left hand side, the mass acceleration part. Why is he getting naked? Basically what this is saying is how does your velocity change with time? The experience you probably have of acceleration would be in a car. So if you're, you're going at a particular speed and then you speed up to so say you go from a road onto a motorway, you then go faster, you're accelerating. So your velocity is changing over time. So that's all this term is saying. It's saying how does the velocity of the fluid change over time? And then on the right hand side of the equation, we've got three separate parts here. This first part, is a pressure gradient. A good way to think about pressure is, for example, when you're underwater, you go diving underwater, and there's a higher pressure because of all the water above you, you sort of feel it in your ears. So there's a high pressure at the bottom of the sea, and then at the top of the sea, there's a lower pressure. And so there's a gradient, there's a change in pressure as yeah. you go deeper diving underwater. So there's a pressure gradient. The Second term on the right hand side of our equation is this one, which is stress, or we can think of it as internal forces. So within your fluid, pressure is also sort of stress. Little bits of fluid are bumping it's a normal stress. into each other, and that's causing stress and causing internal forces. And then finally, the, the end term here, which is external forces, and this, the, the this can really be anything, because you have a fluid and then if you're squeezing it from the outside, say it's, it's being crushed by two walls moving closer, that's applying an external force. We've now stripped- Why is he taking his clothes off? What is, what is, what is wrong with this guy? Seriously, what the hell is, what the heck is this? What the heck is this <sighs> you, you you've got to be impressed with what what people is uh, is capable of uh, is willing to get views on youtube people are willing to do anything to get views on youtube that is ridiculous seriously that is ridiculous three layers of Navier-Stokes equation, and we are down to our fourth and final Jeez. layer. What the actual symbols and what the variables mean in this what, equation. What do, so we're going to begin what do he want to accomplish with this? Seriously. What, do he, what does density. he want to accomplish? So it's in some sense the max, so how heavy a Well, after a while, he did some videos on number five, so it actually accomplished something. So, congratulations to him, I guess. Fluid is so air hey. is lighter than water, salt water is heavier than fresh water. The next variable is T here, which is for time. So, hopefully, we all know what time is. Next up is one of the hopefully variables in the equation. This is U, which is the velocity. So, velocity is speed plus a direction, so it's how fast the fluid is moving, but plus the direction in which it is moving. And then moving on to the right hand side of our equation, the three different forces, pressure, internal, external. So pressure gradient, the P here is of course pressure. Um, so what is pressure? It's not easy to define pressure in a fluid. It's one of the most misunderstood variables in a flow. And it's intrinsically coupled with velocity. So it's kind of complicated. I discussed gradients to have an idea of what pressure is. Next up is another Greek letter. Um, we like them in math. Mu. And mu represents viscosity. You can think of it as how... It's dynamic viscosity. So there's two types of viscosity. So you can describe a variable of viscosity in a fluid. You have dynamic and kinematic viscosity. So of course he, he won't mention that. Little detail. A fluid. The easiest example I can give you is honey. It's very thick. If you have it sort of hold up a spoon, it sort of drips really slowly. It's very sticky. Um, whereas water flows. 
So you can think of viscosity as how well the fluid flows. And the very final variable is F, which is force. And this is very, very general. So the main example of the external force I gave of gravity, you would just replace F with G, which would be gravity, or whatever other. G is an acceleration, it's not a force. Actually, what you mean is for force per unit of volume, like the specific weight of a fluid, like uh, the density times the gravity, that would be a force per volume. Or you can have such as electromagnetism, electromagnetic force, like the Lorentz force. The Lorentz force is the force due to an electric flip and the force due to an electric field plus the force due to a magnetic field. So it appears in, uh, in MHD, in magnetohydrodynamics. So that would be two examples of uh, body forces which acts on the whole volume of a fluid. Force is affecting your fluid. And that's it. We've stripped back all four layers of the Navier stone. You didn't have to strip either, okay? Please stop doing this. This equation. Please Hopefully stop. You Tell, me Please. Tell me he won't get naked. Please. Tell me he won't get naked. Please. I'm not saying you've Please no. Please don't. Who knows? It's a starting point. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to tune in for the next one. Oh, thank God he didn't get naked already. Oh. No, I did not enjoy that at all. Thank you. And of course, make sure you follow me. You can find no, me I Twitter, won't. Facebook, I won't follow you. Instagram. I won't follow you anywhere. Won't. I want. Oh, gee. <sighs> See ya.